This is what it looks like to watch a video on a full-fledged e-ink smartphone. The very first e-ink smartphone we have ever durability tested. Whoa. Pretty wild experience. Definitely not for everyone, of course, but the application is intriguing. In front of us today, we have two boxes. One box containing the Hisense A9 Pro and another box. Uncannily packaged exactly like an iPhone is what we would get if the Tooth Fairy fell in love with a Cybertruck. A fully sealed, watertight, stainless steel toothbrush from today's sponsor, Lifen. I'll be electroplating the sleek stainless steel body with real gold and giving it away in another video, but for now let's just appreciate the 60 degrees worth of gyrations and the 66,000 vibrations a minute. It comes in white ABS, aluminum, and of course stainless steel. With a magnetically charging base, I know Elon's about to buy a hundred of these, and the replacement brush heads are actually priced surprisingly reasonable. You can grab one from Life and yourself with the link down in the description, and be on the lookout for the gold-plated giveaway coming next week. Cleaning your grill with a gold-plated toothbrush has got to be wild. Almost as wild as a grayscale smartphone with a week-long battery life. It's cool that the Hisense A9 Pro comes with such simple packaging. A chill cardboard box with wax paper around the phone itself. And even though the phone is off, the screen appears to still be on. Which is wild. The pixels only use energy when flipping from white to black, so it uses no power at all to just stay in this paper-like state. We also get a flexible rubber case with a really long charging cable, and something we haven't seen in a long time, a free glass screen protector. The further we get into this phone, the more I like it. Turning the A9 on, the screen dips from black and refreshes, while the Android operating system boots into the startup menus we're all so familiar with. Still completely grayscale of course, graphically minimalistic, but still has a front-facing and rear-facing camera. The crazy thing is, though, that while the camera is showing a black and white image on the phone screen, the pictures and videos the phone takes are actually color in real life. So if a picture taken on an A9 is sent through text or email, it will arrive on the other end in full color. This is what a video clip looks like. Just saying hi to the camera. <laughs> this is a crazy phone. Very interesting considering how the footage is previewed on the phone itself. Another little tidbit is since the refresh rate of this display is zero and only flipping pixels that need to be flipped, sometimes the pixels don't entirely flip back to white or black, and there's some ghosting left on the screen. Not a deal breaker of course, just comes with the e-ink territory, and to fix this there's a dedicated refresh button on the side of the A9, which flashes the screen from black to white to reset the pixels. Quite a bit different than a normal smartphone, but I'm here for it. E-ink displays have come a long way. It might not be as flashy or addicting as a 120Hz AMOLED, but that might actually be a plus for people wanting a technology detox, while not losing any of the Android functionality. There's a plastic matte screen protector on the surface, which I'll remove before starting the scratch test. Hisense is using an E-ink Carta 1200 display, which is the same type of technology that's on a Kindle Paperwhite. And lucky for us, it's covered with glass instead of plastic, just like a regular smartphone. It scratches at a level 6, with deeper grooves at a level 7. I would turn the screen off to show the scratches a bit better, but even when the screen is off, it's actually on. So a white background is what we get. In the top bezel near the earpiece is a 5 megapixel front-facing color selfie camera. The frame of the A9 Pro does appear to be made from plastic, along with a built-in fingerprint scanner power button. There's a red accented volume rocker, which is metal, and up top we have a headphone jack. Still surrounded, of course, with the plastic frame rails, which then continue down the left side. The dedicated screen refresh button is metal, and we have a dual SIM card tray. Even though the SIM card tray does have a gray rubber ring around the opening, there is no official water or dust protection rating. So if you own this phone, I would still avoid liquids as much as possible. The bottom of the phone is still made from plastic, but does have a USB-C port and a lower loudspeaker opening. Making our way to the back panel, we find it also scratches, and is made from a black textured plastic, with the Hisense A9 branding just painted right on top. Now, my whole job is social media, right? So I think it makes me overly qualified to say that more than 20 or 30 minutes a day of social media can wreck your entire brain, which means I'm all for an e-reader smartphone crossover. Hopefully this minimalism can minimize the death grip that doom scrolling has on dopamine. Speaking of books though, my favorite read at the moment is Llama Llama Red Pajama, 
I finish it at least twice a day. This drawing is supposed to be baby llama, but it's turned more into a nightmare llama, which I will not be showing my two-year-old. The rear camera is 13 megapixels, and it also shoots in color even though the screen makes it appear otherwise. The camera is protected with glass. If I were to take this lighter to a regular book, it would obviously start on fire. But if that book is instead displayed in e-ink on a Hisense A9 Pro, it can actually survive the flame test pretty much indefinitely. Even after about 25 seconds under the heat from my lighter, the pixels do look a little less refreshed than usual, but a few taps of the side screen refresh button brings everything right back to the way it was before. Even though the fingerprint scanner is scratched, it is still able to set my fingerprint just fine. And adding even more scratches to the surface doesn't seem to diminish its fingerprint sensing abilities. Thumbs up for that. With the phone being plastic, I am slightly nervous about its structural integrity, but when bent from the front, we see some ginormous flexing, and even some audible cracking, but no visible damage to the screen or body, yet. Bending from the backside, it also has quite a bit of flex, but again, no catastrophic damage. It's only after the third bend, with more force than would ever be reasonably applied to a smartphone, that the screen starts to crack. Losing all functionality, with pixels perpetually and permanently parked at their prior points of photonic perception. Now, as a curious human being, I would enjoy delving a bit deeper to see how this e-ink technology works from the inside, but getting inside proved to be rather difficult. I assumed that the back panel would just pop off at the point where the plastic frame meets the glass, but it turns out the entry point is actually under the glued down portion of the back plastic panel where Llama Llama Red Pajama is waiting for his Llama Mama. Sorry about the flashlight, there's really nothing I can do about turning it off now. There are 16 Phillips head screws holding down the phone frame to the phone body, and with those gone I can unsnap the fingerprint scanner. I'll cover up the LED so we aren't blinded anymore, and then we can unplug the battery from the motherboard, just like a little Lego. The lower loudspeaker conveniently has a transparent display window for the balls inside, thank you for that Hisense, and the charging port can come out next. The screen, of course, is still holding its previous pixel positions, even after completely disconnecting the battery, which just proves that e-ink displays don't require power to hold position. There are two more black Phillips head screws holding down the main motherboard, and this motherboard is using pink thermal paste to transfer heat from the processor to the metal midframe of the phone. The headphone jack is soldered to the board, and the rather small front-facing 5 megapixel selfie camera does not have OIS. The modular 13 megapixel rear-facing camera is still mounted to the inside of the phone frame, but also does not appear to have any optical image stabilization. And unfortunately, it appears that Hisense is using permanent adhesive to secure the battery. Pretty big bummer, since the permanent battery makes recycling all that much more difficult. And since I don't feel like burning my house down today, I'm going to leave the battery in place for now. The most interesting thing about an e-ink phone is obviously going to be the e-ink display where a normal screen would definitely be off by now, the Hisense A9 is still turned on and readable. Even when the glass shards are brutally ripped from atop the pixels, the e-ink capsules are still unfazed. It's only when I stir the black and white pigments together that the screen finally concedes and is fully vanquished. Personally, I'm a fan of these futuristically minimal phones, and I hope we see a lot more of them. Would you rock an e-ink smartphone when Apple invents it? Let me know down in the comments. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.